In this video, I'm going to look at the process of recrystallization. So this is one of our practical skills, and typically we would look at this as part of the synthesis of a pure organic solid. And at the college I work at, it's aspirin is the organic solid that we make. So the way I'm going to do it, rather than run through a list of instructions, I've created this little flow chart. Hopefully the diagrams will help you visualize all the key processes and more likely to remember it. Okay, so the top left hand corner, we've got our impure solid, so aspirin in our case. First thing we need to do is dissolve that in a minimum volume of hot solvent. So at the end of this, I'm just going to explain why minimum volume of hot solvent is important. Okay, so that would generate your dissolved solid and any soluble impurities. You'll notice a little bit of solid at the bottom of the tube there. They would be your insoluble impurities. So we need to separate those from each other. And we do that by filtration using reduced pressure filtration or Buchner apparatus. But we need to do that while everything's still hot. So it's often referred to as a hot filtration. So the filter paper would um, trap the insoluble impurities. And the filtrate, so that's the liquid that runs through, is your dissolved solid and any soluble impurities. So the next thing we need to do is put that filtrate in an ice bath to cool it down. And what that will do is it will create crystals of your solid. So effectively you get the crystals of aspirin back. So hence the term recrystallize. And you'll notice a little bit of liquid in that conical flask. That's going to be your solvent and any soluble impurities. So again, at the end of the video, I'll come back to that and explain why the soluble impurities don't crystallize. So we need to separate the solid from the liquid there. So we do another reduced pressure filtration. This time we'll get the crystals of solid, the solid we want, getting trapped on the paper. And the filtrate will be your solvent and any soluble impurities. It's also a good idea at that point to wash the um, solid with some cold solvent. So not hot solvent now, otherwise you dissolve it. So we use cold solvent. And then all we need to do now is get that onto some kind of drying plate. So that could be a, an evaporating dish, it could be a watch glass, or it could be two pieces of filter paper with the solid sandwich between the two. Okay, so I'll go back to those two um, key bits that I said I would return to. So the first one is, why do we use a minimum volume of hot solvent? Well, that's so you can generate what's called a saturated solution. So effectively the solutions, um, the solvents hold in its maximum amount of solute. So when you start to cool that down, the um, crystal formation happens really easily. So saturated solution, when you cool it down from hot, the crystals form quite easily. So that kind of leads into why do we not get, um, why do those soluble impurities not crystallize out at the same time? That's because they're not saturated. There's only a tiny amount of those crystals in the solvent and so they stay in solution. Okay, that's it. I hope that was useful. Maybe take a screenshot of what's on the screen now and uh, get it into your notes. Okay, cheers. Bye.